So I wanted to talk now uh, with the panel about the search wars. And this is a complicated topic and one that I think has quite a bit of nuance. And so I'm going to start uh, uh, with you, Jeff. Um, can you talk about what is search versus generative AI and how they interact and why Google feels like it's search business or, and, and you know, Bill Gates says that it's search business might be uh, under some threat. Sure. Yeah, I think, I think everyone here is probably fairly familiar with search engines. Google processes 80 billion searches a day. And so I'm, I'm sure everyone here, when you've had a question and you've been walking around and you thought, oh, hey, who is in that movie or, or how, what temperature do I bake my chicken at? You, you, you always turn to search engines. You either pulled up your iPhone or you, or you went into Google. And a, and a search traditionally is really just a prompt into, into a, a piece of technology that, that is just returning raw results to you. So it's not telling you anything. It's not processing any information. Uh, really, the evolution of the generative AI in the search domain is leading to a scenario where with tools like GPT-4 being integrated into Bing or BARD being integrated into Google, these search engines aren't just providing you with a list of results, but actually essentially reading and understanding those results and providing you directly with the answer. This is actually very similar to what um, Alexa was doing at one point in time where you just you know, ask it for a song and it would just play a song instead of giving you a list of 10 options that you could choose from. And so as we see more of this generative AI occur, it's really impacting the the way that we interact with these technologies, because at a certain point, you can think of search as an intermediary between what you're actually looking for and 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 you. You know, you're you're not going to Google because you want to go to Google. You're going to Google because you're trying to find an answer, and Google is giving you a lot of results with these generative AI tools and chat chatbot functionalities. Essentially, you can skip that step of surf sifting through results and just get direct answers to your questions and inquiries. And I think that's where these companies are most concerned that there isn't an established monetization model for that, like we have for advertising on a search engine, which we'll talk about a bit in SEO 101. And so, so that creates a scenario where, where the way that our children and the way that we in three years will search for things will drastically change. And these companies really aren't positioned to monetize that, which affects their market value in a pretty extreme way. Perfect. Um, you know, one of the things that really confuses me about what's to come is, you know, how will advertising work in a chat GPT like setting? Jeff, do you have any ideas about what that might look like? I, I do, because actually Bing tested this. So so Bing actually had some examples and, and I can try to find a few and share with the class via the chat later in this lecture. Um, but but essentially there, there was an example query where someone was asking about kind of what type of car to buy. And the chatbot actually explained what the top models of cars were. And then it said sponsored on one of the lines of text. So just now, like you go to Google or Bing and you search for something, those top, res top results are advertising. I think what we're going to start seeing is these chatbots telling us information and then noting that, it, that it's been incentivized to, to tell us certain information. So it's kind of a very... A, a very interesting phenomenon because as a human, part of what we like about these chatbots is they act like humans. They, 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 you, we've talked about, you know, our mirror neurons and how they inherently come off to us as trustworthy. But all of a sudden when the chatbot we're talking to, we know they're being paid by Toyota to tell us to buy a truck. All of a sudden that kind of, that shakes our confidence a bit. And so, so I think we're going to see advertising in these chatbots. I, I guarantee it. In fact, there's no, <laughs> there's no way we don't. These companies have to do this or else their market value is going to collapse and collapse the U.S. and global economy at the same time. So we will see advertising in these bots. And I think it's going to be very interesting to see if that just destroys their utility, um, which is then where we start, you know, seeing very interesting things with third players who don't have the financial limitations that someone like Microsoft or Google has when it comes to making those decisions. So, so we're going to go into your five definitions here. Is there anything else context-wise that you want us to understand about search and Google uh, before we launch in? I, I should probably share one fun fact because we talk about chat GPT all the time in GPT-4. The T in GPT stands for transformer. 
And Google engineers invented the transformer architecture in 2016. So just to give another point to how deeply embedded Google is into this AI race, even though we haven't been hearing about them because they haven't been releasing cool products we can use, they invented the modern transformer that OpenAI is even based on in the first place. So it's, a, so it's an interesting context there. A lot of what you said, Dan, is really great context. They've been a sleeping giant and they haven't figured out how to, how to monetize this or roll it out. And that could be detrimental or they could come back and come in hard swinging. So we'll see. You know, uh, um, you know, I really sympathize with the challenge that Google faces. Um, and uh, one of the things as I was researching today is I, I had no idea how much talent they've lost. Um, there's just a deep amount. I mean, there is no more um, hireable person right now than an AI engineer. We're actually gonna meet one in the wild next week uh, uh, who works at Disney. And um, yeah, it's a good it's a good place to be professionally. And Disney uh, and, and Google has just been getting crushed uh, on that front, um, losing all this talent that they cultivated for years.